We're at Tabacone Cigars and Spirits in Plantation. Tonight is the 560 WQAM Whiskey Stars and Cigars event. And uh, we're out here doing the show till 6. Gino Toretta is sitting with me here. The uh, CEO of Evening's Delight, who you are an ambassador for, Hamp Tanner, is sitting here with us as well. Alejandro Solana to my right. Uh, your left, if you're watching on TV. I don't know if you're watching on TV, and I don't even know if it's on your left. You ever do that when you're doing the radio games? Do you go uh, returning this kick left to right on your radio dial? Yeah, everybody does. Yeah, but does well. I don't do it. The analysts are. But what does that mean? Huh? What does that mean? If I'm watching my radio left to right on my radio dial. So if you're in a car Uh and it's you say left to we're going to describe the action left to right. Right, but what would I care? Huh? What would I care? <laughs> well, it's still the play. You, you're trying to put a picture of what's you going so ang- on in your what head. Are you so, what are you so angry today? <laughs> why, are you, why are you so on edge? <laughs> Somebody get this guy a Swisher Sweet, will you? <laughs> Not one of my homemade ones, though. <laughs> but anyway, we're here. And so tonight we have Whiskey Stars and Cigars. And you can come on out. You can enjoy a Drew Estate cigar. And uh, we're having the time of our lives. I mean, uh it's a fun, uh, a fun place. Hopefully, the weather will cooperate. But if you're, uh, if you're looking for something to do tonight, I think around six o'clock there will be a little mix and mingle, and you can walk here into a tabacon and uh, enjoy a cigar and a, a nice spirit. And then uh, around seven o'clock, there's a little stage out here, and uh, we'll get up there. We'll talk a little sports. I'll talk McRibs, and uh, we're going to give away a. Uh, so I a, came up too early. Is that what you're saying? Are you going to stick around tonight? No. All right. Um, <laughs> but I think we're giving away a grill from uh, from Evening's Delight. Hamp, what are we giving away tonight? Do you know? Tonight we are giving away a Louisiana Grills pellet smoker. It's a large uh, size. I think they call it the LX1000. Don't quote me on that. But it's a large capacity pellet smoker, so you could fit a number of Boston butts on there, uh, Beef briskets, racks of rib, or all of the above. McRibs? How about a McRib? If I want to fire up an already cooked McRib and just give it a a smoky flavor. It would probably improve it. All right. What? (laughs) You can never improve the McRib. Nothing's perfect. What do you think of guys like me who are the opposite of (laughs) Gino? I don't know how to grill. I uh, don't uh, aspire. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know how to cook. (laughs) I drink an Aperol spritz. W two Roy walking into the uh, this is uh, a longtime listener of ours. Roy Roy collects W twos the way that most people collect bobbleheads. He cannot. He can get a job. He is the king of getting a job. He cannot hold a job, and so he collects. I know his wife. His wife has worked security at the Miami Heat for twenty years. The most stable employee you'd ever meet. Roy. Goes through, I don't know, 16 jobs a year, collects his W-2s, and, uh, and moves on to the next one. But anyway, he's, uh, he's out here. We call him W-2 Roy. Love W-2 Roy. Looking good, W-2. <laughs> anyway, what do you think of guys like me? I don't, uh, I don't cook. I don't grill. I know Gino's a man's man. There's a reason that he won the Heisman. Can, can so, you boil water? I can boil water. Can you make an Aperol spritz? Uh, I mean, I, 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 I mean, I've never made one before. I don't know what's in it at this point. But oh one, my God! Once I found out, I'm sure I could create one. I'm sure there's some <laughs> aperol in there and and some spritz. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> see, see what yeah, I'm dealing yeah. with. So, so what? What I'm wondering is, are you coachable? I, well, I, I feel like I'm coachable, but I think anyone no, who's around not me, coach. <laughs> my wife has a, a a recipe for pasta sauce. <laughs> it's four ingredients. She goes, "This is the easiest sauce you'll ever is, make." You're talking about her good. gravy, her gravy, <laughs> her sauce. <laughs> All right, Any, Sunday gravy. He can't do it. Yeah. Well, Italians call pasta sauce no, gravy. Don't. Yeah. No, we don't. Well, most call it sauce. Do. A lot of them call it gravy. Sunday sauce. That's well, why it's called Sunday. Some people sauce. Some people call it gravy. Monday night football, Sunday sauce. But I, I don't know. Are you a cook, Solana? I am. Yes, I'm a uh, part-time chef. I would <laughs> no, imagine. no. Can you cook? I can. Professional I can kayaker, part-time <laughs> chef. No, but could you like? Could you? I'll, now, fl- now, I'll his, flambe something. His his, sure. his family. What do you have? A blowtorch? No, he doesn't out- flambe anything. <laughs> but his family is big into grilling. You know, he's Uruguayan. Okay. His dad 
has this big, what do they call that? We, we call it a parrilla. Parrilla. Right, a parrilla. So it's a brick oven oh, yeah. to cook meat them. on. Why do you have to always re-say something somebody says that's not in the exact tone of, well, of your accent? I just want to make accent. sure we're on the same page here. It's a parrilla. Gino is very prickly that, today. Have you that, noticed this? Like well, when you say a matrachana and he's like, no, it's pronounced this way, it's just like. Dude, what is this? The grammar police? Well, why don't we start with you calling right. Sunday sauce gravy? Because that, <laughs> that to me, is more important than anything going on here. But go ahead. You have the parija. Right. And, uh, All you right. Can, what's your go-to? My go-to? Yeah. Well, if I'm coming over, if, if the three of us are coming over for dinner, what are you going to make? All right. Yeah. In fact, let's go around the room All right. and answer that. All Solana, right. you're first. Okay. Uh, we're, we three are coming over. What are you making? Okay. Well, for Hawk, obviously, I'll just order some McDonald's or something for him because it's, <laughs> no, it's, I don't mind eating other people's delicious yeah, food. Exactly. So we'll throw on uh, a couple of asils onto that? the grill. Um, I don't know exactly what cut it is, but it's a, a cut of meat. Uh, some entraña, which is more like a stripped steak meat as well like a skirt then, steak like a skirt steak almost and then picanha which i know you That's and i okay. have discussed Those before picanha nice fatty top on top you throw it on there real red when it comes out delicious a couple chorizo some sausages as well and that to me sounds like a fantastic asado all right you have now, paddles at your house paddles paddles pickleball are we on a different topic? Heart attack battle. <laughs> <laughs> After I'm eating nothing but protein, fat, and sausage. Now, if you three paddles for me. If you three were coming to the Hockman house, mm -hmm. I would make Kraft macaroni and cheese because that is my specialty. You asked before if I could boil water. And you don't I even can. put any edamame in it or anything? But here's what I lobster. do. Lobster. You go get some, I, some Publix lobster. I actually measure... The right amount of milk and the right amount of butter. A lot of people eyeball. Uh, it. Eyeball. Yeah. I do eyeball it the right. I do it the right way. And then when you I'm shaking, it? when I'm shaking the powder yeah. on, You're good. I do it in a clockwise fashion so that it gets a, a little spread, do, if you do will. You whisk it. Do you and whisk then, it? And then, there? if I'm really, it. if I'm, if I'm trying to impress, I'll whisk. pull out the whisk. If it's just an everyday mac and cheese, it's going to be the wooden spoon. He's like so. Walter White making meth in Breaking Bad. But <laughs> now, what would you, Gino? What cheese. would you if we were all coming over to your house? Uh, would you want? I, first off, I would just ask, what protein would you want? Steak. Uh, well, I don't know. You're the chef. No, that no. I, oh, I, I love. Mean, I know what I like. I love ribs. No, we're not doing ribs. You just ribs, asked me ribs if I is ribs. no. We're not doing. You ribs. You literally just asked me if I, if I wanted ribs. I would do. I would do probably what I like is I would do what what I call a Tuscan steak. So I would either get a, a bunch of flank steaks, grill those, and then when they're done, I take fresh herbs, sage, rosemary, garlic, and all of a season the olive oil. And then put it all over the steak, cut it, and then you get the the olive oil and the flavoring. Then you got to have some kind of starch. And you can make mine well done, though, because I like my steak well done. Okay, you are not invited to anything I'm ever going to cook for. <laughs> really? Does anybody ask for well done? Yeah, you're just ruining the piece of meat. All right, medium well, then. Medium well. All right, either way. <laughs> well, I'll cut you the, the little thin piece on the end of the flank and uh, just burn the hell out of it. This is why I don't eat prime rib. You ever walk up to one of those prime rib stations? It's this bloody, gooey oh, mess of meat. So it's so good. I mean, look yeah. disgusting to me. You're a I medium. Am, you're a well done guy. No, I I like. Here's the thing. So, <laughs> if I really had my druthers, I like medium well. If I'm going to a steakhouse, if we, we went to Chops the other night in okay. Boca, I get it medium so that the chef doesn't spit on the on the <laughs> steak because I know if you get anything more than medium. They're gonna they're yeah, they're gonna make fun burger. of you. Just yeah. get a burger and well done. But I like a burger medium well. And, and you know I what would... an easier way to do that is? Hmm. Just get a fillet, tell them to butterfly it, and well, then, that's, and then I, cook it. And right, you won't, that's how I like it. Because I don't problem. like a big giant thick piece of meat. I like a, a butterfly like steak. Big, giant, thick piece of <laughs> <Yeah>. meat. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I do. Luckily, neither <laughs> does my wife. <laughs> In a salad, okay. you gotta have a homemade salad. But now that I know you like your steaks well done, you're not. Well, invited. no, I would have it. You're not invited. I would, I would have it. I would have it medium. But will you make pasta as well because you're Italian? Uh, it, maybe. All right. Maybe you have a good. Uh, you have a good gravy. My wife makes a great sauce. I'm not. I'm not into this. I can usually take her recipes. Like I can. I made homemade uh, gnocchis the other day, 
And I, I can make a homemade gnocchi with a uh, brown butter and sage sauce. Oh, I like Ooh. that. Homemade ricotta and gnocchi. Oh, I like Ooh. that. Now, Hamp Tanner is the CEO of Evening's Delight. And Gino comes Hamp's on. Hamp's bringing the wine. I, Gino, I know if I'm cooking, Gino, he's bringing the wine. Gino comes on every week courtesy of Evening's Delight. And we're giving away a grill here tonight at Whiskey Stars and Cigars. What's your specialty? We're coming over to your place. I'm imagining it's all decked out. You've probably been grilling for, uh, for as long as you've been alive. I, so the cobbler's kids have no shoes. <laughs> I, uh, Come, this can't be real. I, this is real. I, I mean, I just bought the store a year ago and uh, have not built an outdoor kitchen at my house here. We, well, let's say you have one. Let's say you okay. – what is, what no, is your – I grills. I can grill. So what are you going to grill? You said it's like super decked out. Not yet. One All day, right. yes. So I tried a recipe recently. It was awesome. I've done it twice now. I'm going to go back to it a third time when you guys come over. We're going to take some flank steak. We're going to spread it out. We're going to mallet it, make it real thin. Oh, the, now you're and speaking my language. I'm going to brown some chorizo, ground chorizo, and I'm going to s- sprinkle that in there with some uh, grated manchego cheese. Oh, Ooh, love with some, manchego with cheese. some olive oil yeah. and uh, cilantro. And I'm going to roll Light it Light on the cilantro for me. Okay. Oh, um, you're making grilled brajo. Like I'm the making, Italian brajo. It's, it's a, usually meat and. Yeah, it's a pinwheel. So we're going to roll it up. Oh. We're going to stick it with some skewers. And then we're going to put it over a, a, a open flame on charcoal and grill that thing. You know, a little bit Uruguayan style. Yes, sir. And, uh, and it's going to be delicious. And for the appetizer, it's going to be sausages. Mm-hmm. And for dessert, we'll probably do. Sausage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to think, but we've already done sausage, so for dessert, we, oh, could, we, more sausage. Could, we could do ribs. I made homemade Italian <laughs> sausage you wouldn't, yesterday. You wouldn't, you wouldn't get an argument from me. I made homemade Italian sausage. Why yesterday. Why no ribs, though? I love ribs. Why did you poo-poo the ribs? Uh, ribs, would be, to me, if you're coming over to my house, would be more like an appetizer. All right, I'll make some for you if you, if you really want some. I, I, would, I would pick other cuts of pork. Gotcha. You know. Right. Him being like, ah, I don't know what kind of cut of meat it is. I just buy something. Seems odd to not know it, what it, the uh, cut is. Be a chef. Be a chef and be yeah. like, yeah, you know. I know what cut of meat it is in Spanish. I don't well, know what does it say on the package? Basilos, it I believe it's, it's like flat meat. It's like a flat meat cut. Is it a hanger steak? I Yeah, I don't know. We, we have to have this again, conversation in again. Spanish. I'm, I'm used to just going to Sedano. Okay, where do you buy this? Oh, Sedano? Sedano. Okay, well, don't yeah, you buy it? Well, say you, the speak, name? you speak in Italian. You speak in Spanish. Let's see how this goes. No, Go apparently I don't speak in the in proper pronunciation. <laughs> oh, if you're not going to call the sauce gravy, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get headlines here for the 3 o'clock hour. We're getting way too sidetracked, and uh, Hamp Tanner from Evening's Delight is sitting with us. I wanted to talk a little grilling with him, but let's get a quick look at the headlines with Alejandro Solana. All right, guys, so uh, just your local headlines yesterday. The Panthers did lose 6-3. to three. They were in Winnipeg. They finished up their quick two-game road trip. Tomorrow, they'll play the Blackhawks in Chicago. Connor Bedard. Yeah. Bedard. To your player. Hey, Hawk, you know how yesterday we were talking so much about the big play from the Dolphins' offense and how they've gone away from the big play, and it's this big strategy by Mike McDaniel, different approach offensively. Tua spoke at the podium today, and the media asked him about the big play, and I'm reading a Joe Shad tweet here from the Palm Beach Post. He says, the Dolphins do want to take more shots down the field, according to Tua Tungavailoa but they're just taking what defenses are playing, what defenses are giving them. So this idea that they've gone away from the big play, not really a reality. It, I guess, just hasn't been there for the Dolphins. Well, I I mean, I would think, obviously, we talked about it yesterday, that's what teams are doing. They're trying to take away that big play so that Tyreek Hill's not going to beat you. And you go, okay, if Devon Achan can beat me, I I can live with that. If it's Tyreek Hill, I'd rather shut him down. But I do think that there's a concerted effort on Mike McDaniel's part to tell Tua, try not to force in the big play. Just take what they give us. And if it's these short little dink and dunks, that's fine. we got to find our way into the playoffs. And so if that means doing it in an uglier fashion than we had been doing it, you do run a risk, I think, of getting Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell upset yeah. that the offense has completely changed. I mean, Listen, you know, wide receivers, I mean, they believe they're open, I'm guessing, well, they you know, want, on they every want, single they want catch. play. There's no question. They want, they want catches, though. I, I would just say 
What took defensive coordinators that long to figure out that Reek can fly, Jalen can fly, and A-Chain can fly? I mean, it, well, listen, is, I, is I it, wouldn't go into – if I'm a defensive coordinator against the Dolphins, and my game plan wouldn't be, okay, I, I'm going to blitz the hell out of Tua and get to Tua. Well, you leave yourself open – to three of the fastest guys in the league. It makes no sense. So, like, the NFL is just like, here, let's just put everybody, you know, everybody's getting paid and, you know, just let them catch balls in front of us. At least we can tackle them, you know, and take your chances there. It, it, it was amazing to me as you would see them try – defenses try to play man – with personnel that can't run with those but, guys. But do you think that may have been an effect of them not believing Tua could strike deep? And then as he showed it, as he was able to hit Tyreek in stride or close enough on a, on a deep end. I haven't watched enough Tua. I, I, where, mean, I, watched, I, him I, just in, wonder, I watched him in college. The, guy, the guy's one of the most accurate throwers of the football. It doesn't matter if it's downfield. I mean, Christ, he came in as a freshman – I don't want to bring up bad memories to oh, him because he's a Georgia oh. guy. He came in as a freshman and threw a freaking dime down the left sidelines to win the national championship game cold from the bench. Yeah, I mean, that, it, the, so to me, it's it's more of the defenses have finally figured out, hey, it is not worth the risk of us going man coverage against these guys because Tua's processing the stuff mentally fast enough now to where if you do it, you're going to get killed. Go ahead and scratch off. You know what? You know what's great Georgia on the radio? Headlines, by dead the way. air. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, while we have dead air, let me point one thing out. Please. Very important. Yeah. I don't come to this radio program with a Heisman Trophy. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> <laughs> but I do come to this program as a, an alumni of the same high school as Tyreek Hill. Is that so? That's right. Coffee wow. County High School in Douglas, Georgia. And uh, did you ever beat him in a race? <laughs> uh. When he was about two, he couldn't catch me because I'm older than him. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I would uh, say in a car, but I've seen him be pulled over and his car yeah, goes no, faster than mine. My, my, my GMC pickup will not keep up with a McLaren, I'm sure. But, uh, no, he, he's the pride cheetah, uh, athletic pride of our hometown. Although we we had a couple of Major League Baseball players and uh, now another NFL ball player as well, but he's my age and – He's retired from the league for many years. Well, but Gino is the pride of my alma mater. <laughs> is that so? Uh, right behind Michael Irvin, Ray Lewis, uh, Edron James. <laughs> wow, that's pretty bad. Uh, Vinny Testaverde. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Jim Kelly. Right down the list. Those are Dorsey. <laughs> and right, and uh, yeah. who else? How's your, how's your Cam Ward? How's your Kenny uh, Kelly? Mount Rushmore <laughs> quarterbacks going. So I, you I brought have, up that, and I, then Cam lost I, the game. I do have a Mount Rushmore that I tweeted out today because of the McRib sauce. Uh huh. And this is I, I don't want to read you some of the responses yet, but here's my Mount Rushmore of fast food sauces. Okay. All right. Number Gravy. one. <laughs> number one, McRib sauce from McDonald's. Yep. Number two, mustard curry. From Chicken Kitchen. Yeah. Okay. Original Chop Chop. You know what I'm talking yep, about. Yep. Number three, honey roasted barbecue sauce from Chick-fil-A. Little known Chick-fil-A sauce. Everybody likes Chick-fil-A sauce. I love their honey roasted barbecue sauce. Okay. And number four, the garlic dipping sauce from Papa John's. Hmm. Hmm. That's a strong Mount Rushmore. That's a stretch on the yeah. last one. I'm not so certain. Papayon? It's huh? a stretch. Have Papayon's? <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Let's finish up the headlines here. I'll get into that Mount Rushmore later. Kind of, kind of like when I asked for a Starbucks. <laughs> What's your name? Hino? <laughs> <laughs> Left off the uh, McDonald's Szechuan sauce, huh? That's a lot a- of people uh, responding with that. Yeah. 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 Uh, one other note from the Miami. A lot Dolphins. of people love the Arby's horsey sauce. <laughs> You know, I've never been a big Arby's guy. I'm America's Ar- roast I, beef in Youngstown. I, I, I'm not a big Arby's guy. I am not an Arby's guy either. You like Arby's? I would go to Arby's and uh, get the chicken salad you know, sandwich. I remember in the late 80s they had the two for five. Oh, yeah. That was a big the, deal. The, the roast beef, big, the big one. Yeah. Five. I took advantage of that because it was a good deal. That was a good deal. Whatever sandwich you get there, it needs a hell of a sauce. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think they use a fine cut of roast beef? <laughs> no, I just... It's a lot of meat, and then it ends up being dry, and I All need, right. you know, some moisture. Put that horsey it's sauce It's like uh, your, your hot dog eating guy. Needs a lot of moisture. Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy uh, Jimmy eats a hot dog plain at yeah. Costco. What? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. No. 
No. The food takes on this show are. I know. It's lucky I'm here to save them. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Solana? Yeah. Uh, one other Dolphins note, Kendall Fuller remains in concussion protocol. And yesterday in the end. Do NBA- you really think that would have changed in the first, since the first hour of the show? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, no offense. I think he's reestablishing it. I don't think A headline? I don't think he's commenting that he's still in concussion protocol from the 2 o'clock hour. I think he's <laughs> but saying. But why do I have to listen to it again? Well, he's I think he, might- he had a concussion. He still had a concussion. I, no, but I think he might be <laughs> talking to people who weren't listening. Listening to the headlines at two o'clock and letting them know. Gino, this is how headlines work. People <laughs> yeah, headlines get in their break car. at like five a.m. Gino is very prickly. Three. Today. He's very prickly today. <laughs> so very you just prickly. carry a bottle of Italian vinaigrette around with you everywhere you go, Gino. <laughs> I usually get other terms. Are you always a? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I get that one. Uh, the Celtics. Gino, take off your headphones. The Celtics snapped the Cavs on beaten streak to start the season. <laughs> you may have, I know. I remember. It's the may, greatest yeah. streak ever uh, in the history of the have, NBA. You may have heard this in the 2 o'clock hour. <laughs> they beat them 120. Play along. Here, 17. Play along. Uh, the Canes play Wake Forest this Saturday. The Heat are back in action Sunday against Dallas after five days off. And, of course, the Dolphins, they play in New England on Sunday. Your weather from the Demesman and Dover Law Firm, call them, 866-954-MORE, youraccidentattorneys.com. Free consultations 24-7. Just take, he is uh, fast. It, hold on. Gino hold on. is just fascinated by how you do the weather. <laughs> just take a gander <laughs> out here. That's yeah, a nice afternoon, man. I can't complain. <laughs> yeah, that's his weather. Yeah. It's a nice afternoon. There you go. Uh, Gino Toretta is here with us. Thank you, Hamp Tanner, for all that you do for us. And uh, I certainly suggest anyone who's uh, in the market – for a grill or any of the uh, accoutrement, you head over to Evening's Delight, two locations, correct? That's correct, here in Davie, and uh, our primary or flagship store is in Pinecrest, right on uh, Dixie Highway, Dadeland area. Um, and will you uh, will you vouch for Gino's skills? Because he talks a big game, but I'm just curious, you being a professional, can you vouch for his skills? <laughs> I will say that the couple things I've had that Gino cooked turned out quite well. But, you know, the jury's still out because I need some more data points. All right, fair enough. I mean, it doesn't sound like a ringing endorsement, and quite well is not exactly, okay, okay. you know. L- let, me, let me put a, a better bow on that. It's, I'd say above an 8, maybe not a 10, because 10's that's All right, aspirational. So but closer to a 7 than a 10, <laughs> but somewhere in the 8s. Uh, eight, 8. 8.8 minimum, All right, I'd say. Fair enough. That. Fair but enough. anyway, thank you guys for having me. Oh. It's a great partnership here with you guys uh, on the sports show with Gino and, and Crowder and you. We uh, we appreciate everything you do. We do like talking. We uh, want to discount this Crowder. I'll show him up anymore. <laughs> <laughs> He's missed two I'm weeks gonna, in a row. I have to talk to yeah, the sales department. He's missed two weeks in a row. <laughs> All right. Anything else, Solana, or is that it? Uh, I think we're good to go. All right. No we more are updates, breaking live. news. Well, on at your 4 headlines. o'clock, we're going to tell you that Will Fuller is still. Uh, Will, in, Furl, Will, Will Fuller. Yeah. In concussion <laughs> protocol. Yeah, concussion <laughs> protocol. All right. There you go. Uh, your headlines, and uh, appreciate it. Hamp, we're out at Tabacone Cigars and Spirits Plantation Walk tonight. Whiskey, stars, and cigars here with 560. WQAM.